This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Medallion Resources, Mr. Mark Saxon. Mark, how are you? Hey, Gerardo, good afternoon. I'm doing pretty well, no complaints at all. Healthy, happy amongst these uh, interesting times, I take it? Yeah, interesting times, no doubt about that. I, I live in Victoria in Australia where we're having a bit of a, uh, a resurgence, but the numbers are still not too bad in terms of uh, how we're looking in Australia. So I think we're in good good shape and uh, and able to do our work and keeping busy and uh, and keeping optimistic. Let's talk about that. You had some news a few days ago that I think, given the context of U.S.-China relations and, and, and the direction that 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 seems to be trending is going to play an important part. The news release, the headline was Medallion Forms U.S. Focused REE Supply Chain Consortium. Now, let's um, let's go one at a time. First, can we talk about what the initiative is about? And then let's talk about how Medallion plays a part in that. We've we've described Medallion before as a puzzle piece that could be valuable to to many potential um, suitors, and, and we'll get into that a bit, but can you give us an overview quickly of, of the news here recently? For sure, and uh, very happy to talk about it, and, and uh, it's an exciting time, I guess, in the industry, and, and Medallion, I think, has a very important role to play. So I guess as, as an overview and a refresher, Medallion is focused on rare earth metals, particularly within the U.S., and the production of rare earth metals. So Medallion has developed a proprietary technology that takes a byproduct mineral, which is called monazite, and uses that to process and produce high value rare earth uh, products. So it's a little bit different to some other uh, rare earth companies around that uh, that I'm sure your, your listeners are familiar with, in that Medallion has focused on the technology side rather than the resource side. And I guess that's given us a real niche. It allows us to move quickly. And by using a byproduct mineral, it means that uh, we're able to come into production with relatively low capex and a high degree of, of security with regard to our timing. So I guess that's, that niche has meant that we have been recently approached by some other partners within the supply chain. And, uh, and, and the rare earth industry is very much a supply chain driven industry. It's, uh, it's got a lot of steps. And so we are in discussion now as part of this consortium with different parts of that supply chain. And uh, at the moment, it's on a, a no names basis. We're not allowed to say who we're working with. But it's financial partners, it's uh, separation partners, it's Medallion in the middle as an extraction partner. And really, it's a way to accelerate our part of the business into production uh, cheaply and efficiently. And that's that's really been quite hard to do. And uh, yeah, we're very pleased with the progress, um, particularly with the timing at the moment where US-China relations are a little strained, unfortunately. And, and with COVID, then uh, I think we're extremely well placed. Can you explain for people that aren't as familiar with the story as I am, why Medallion could be a a very, very valuable puzzle piece to a variety of suitors, as I said up top, right? I, I, I think that that's not as well understood as it should be. And I think you're the perfect person to kind of give us an overview of what a supply chain looks like and, and the various steps that different partners play in that i think this release is important because you're bringing what looks like everyone to the table right yeah exactly so i guess the, the missing link in the um the rare earth uh, supply chain in the west has been i guess the earliest parts of the supply chain so at the moment the rare earth supply chain is very dependent on chinese production and it's been that way for 30 years and the us and europe and it has played a very little role um, within rare earth production so we all understand the, the supply security threat that that is creating for the U.S., and, and that's particularly in the defense industries, that's in, but it's in the automotive industry, that's in the renewable energy industries as well. So um, at the moment, uh, the U.S. doesn't produce any rare earths. It doesn't really contribute at all in the downstream. Um, but if we think about um, a company that has to open a brand new rare earth mine, then uh, that's a very big hurdle to get across. So big capex, uh, lots of technology risk, uh, lots of dependence on market prices where the Chinese um, competitors can influence the market price. And we saw that before when Mountain Pass opened and um, and had a, a range of problems. Um, it was just kind of too big for the industry. Um, Medallion, in contrast, is, is a small and nimble player within that industry. Um, so the business model for Medallion is to take a byproduct mineral from the mineral sands industry and use that to produce rare earth metals within the US. So we can look in, in the US today, um, there's mineral sands already being mined. 
there is monazite, our feedstock, already being produced and stockpiled uh, that is going to waste or being sold to China. So it either sits on a stockpile and, uh, and doesn't go anywhere or it gets on a ship and, and heads off to China for process. And I guess that gives us a, um, a niche where we can take that product and uh, at very low capex and uh, very competitive opex, we can convert that into a rare earth product for sale. And that can entirely be done within the US. That can be using US chemicals, US equipment, and it never needs to leave the borders of the United States. But I guess if we look more broadly, um, our transferable technology can drop into other locations around the world as well, where monazite from mineral sands is available and function equally uh, equally well. It's not dependent on one location. And I guess the beauty of, of using mineral sand monazite is that it's a, a very homogeneous um, product. It means that wherever we go in the world, the material is almost identical. Um, it's almost like adding another chemical into our process. Um, so we don't have the big variability of, um, of a normal mining project. It means we can be very consistent. We can be predictable in our costs. We can be predictable in our timelines. And that really means that we can um, get customers. We can talk about supply chain. We can talk about real timelines. We can talk about reasonably low costs. And, uh, and really, that's the thing for the industry. Excellent. Can you explain the technology and how it's different from what other companies and, and what other groups are doing in the space? Yeah, for sure. Really, we have very few competitors in the space and, and there's many rare earth companies around, but they're all doing slightly different things, I guess. And so um, head to head competition is, is really not that common. So if you look within the uh, in the US or within, um, let's say, North America, there's another number of companies that are working on hard rock projects looking to open a mine and extract rare earths from a, a mining project. And yeah, I, I all strength to their arm. I think there are, some of them are very good projects and will um, will have success. But um, that is a multi, multi-year project. Uh, that's a very large capex project and will take a long time to be able to find the capital required to move ahead. Um, so I guess that's one set, sort of normal mining companies. Uh, there's another set of companies that are working on um, extraction technology, uh, sorry, separation technologies. So the separation is where they take a mixed rare earth product and they take it out into the individual metals uh, for end use. In between two, those two kind of end members, we've got Medallion sitting where we focus completely on a byproduct. And so we're able to take a low value byproduct and turn it into a, <clears throat> a high value finished product. And uh, in a way that um, doesn't require opening of a mine and doesn't require high capital cost. So we use a chemical process to break down the, uh, the monazite. So the monazite feed comes in and, and literally it looks like a brown sand um, that even today we could buy from, from Georgia. We could buy it from so Georgia in the, in the US. We could buy it from Western Australia. We could buy it from uh, a number of parts of Africa or Sri Lanka or Indonesia. We could buy that um, that brown sand. Um, we take it into our process. We use a chemical process, and, and then um, out comes a, um, a phosphate product for a fertilizer industry, and out comes a rare earth product to go into uh, high strength rare earth mega. Whether or not President Trump is reelected, and whether or not Joe Biden becomes president of the United States, both sides have made it very clear that clean energy and developing the infrastructure of this country is is likely to be one of the key um, packages that 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 will be passed by either or at this point is what what it looks like to me. Um, I notice in the release there's a there's a comment that says where appropriate public sector funding from a range of supportive U.S. agencies. Um, will be will be entertained, of course. And so, is is that the logical next step now that you have, you know, this powerhouse of a team all coming together and 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 looking at the different um, steps within that supply chain? Does it does it allow for leverage in presenting a more comprehensive request if if that's the path that that Medallion takes and the group takes? Mm, yeah, I guess. On the politics side, and, and I'm yeah the, the worst person to talk about U.S. politics, obviously, <laughs> and uh, uh, that's that's not my realm. But I guess uh, if we if we look at, um, at at whoever gets elect elected in uh, in the U.S., 
uh, this is too important to be um, to be left to sort of the political cycle. And I think if we look at a mirror image of what's happening within Europe at the moment, then exactly the same conversations are happening and the supply security angle has never been more important uh, and, and also the sustainability of supply um, in terms of the environmental impact. And at the moment, the rare earth industry, because it's so Chinese dominated, it has a very poor record in terms of its environmental impact. Uh, that, that needs to change going forward and it doesn't matter who is elected, um, where you are, where I am, or, or what's happening in Europe. Um, it's, it's a bigger issue than um, than any of those election cycles. Um, so I guess in terms of uh, public funding, um, the supply security um, issues um, pre-COVID and, and for a much longer time have been identified as a, um, as a as a very critical issue for the United States and uh, and for other areas as well. And so long-term investments are being made in, in researching what can be done entirely within the United States um, without a reliance on external suppliers. And uh, and what we're doing in, in Medellin is, is the perfect answer for that. Um, I guess um, there's there's many parts to the, the rare earth supply chain. Um, what we're doing is, uh, and through this consortium, is we're bringing a very substantial part of that supply chain back into the US. Um, obviously, if public funding is available, that's great. We will we'll certainly, uh, yeah, seek to be part of that. And um, and really, the public funding gives us um, access to money is nice, but access to profile and and smart people and and laboratories, um, yeah, is is just as important. So uh, we can bring a, a substantial part of the industry back into the US. Uh, that will allow other parts of the rare earth industry, particularly downstream, and that in particular is high strength permanent magnet manufacturing. Um, it will allow that to develop as well because suddenly they have a, uh, a confidence that the materials, the raw materials, will be available within the US, which uh, yeah cannot be said today because everything is only being imported in through China. Um, at the moment, really, without the Chinese supply, um, there there is no magnets for the US, there is no magnets for wind turbines, there is no magnets for um, uh, for the EV industry, um, and really that, that supply chain needs to be greatly improved and strengthened. Uh, and the U.S. should and needs to be a big part of that. Well said, Mark. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? I thought that was thorough, um, a great overview. And and thank you, obviously, for your time. Um, what can we expect from Medallion? What's next? Yeah, so I guess since we last spoke, we, we've done quite a bit. So we completed a small financing. We've restarted some technical work, and that's got its, uh, its back on the path and, and uh, moving ahead. Uh, with the uh, the launching of this uh, consortium alliance, um, it's giving us a, a much stronger view, I guess, uh, up and down the supply chain. And so, uh, yeah, we're we're really pushing ahead now. And um, so, uh, yeah, feeling very confident about the uh, the place we are. And um, yeah, obviously, COVID slows things down at the moment, but uh, because of the work we're doing, we're in in good shape to to weather that storm. And uh, yeah, we're feeling very optimistic. We weren't able to talk names about this new group that everybody's coming together for. I, I, I get the sense and I suspect that that will change in a short time. And hopefully I can have you back on so we can talk in more specific detail about the work that's being done. It's important work. Um, and again, thank you for that overview. I appreciate it. Thanks, Gerardo. And uh, yeah, have a good evening there. And uh, yeah, thanks for the support. Chat soon. All right. Thanks, Gerardo. Bye for now.